you will have a live contender in Global Citizen. How excited are you? It's great, to be honest. It's actually, although we've obviously had grade one winners and festival runners and winners and all the rest of it, um, it's our first runner in one of the Blue Ribbon events. And the champion hurdle's always been a, a race which has been very exciting to watch. Um, it was very exciting to be a small part of when I was at Nicky's and now to have our first runner in our own right is, yeah, it's, it, it'll be a great feeling and I'm hoping for a good run. And he won at Haydock in really good style in a grade two last time, really improving from, from his run at Kempton. Why, why do you think he improved so much? He just wasn't quite right that day, day at Kempton. He, he was just doing too much the whole time. He hung very badly. We chucked him in a bone scan, found a little bit of heat in his hock that we medicated, and, and that seems to put him back on the straight and narrow. And yeah, he was very good that day at Haydock. He, to be fair, he only did really what he had to do. Uh, but he settled better, jumped very well, and um, yeah, he's just, he is a progressive horse, but he's hes also a horse that I i always thought would be good enough to, to, to get to this level, to be, you know, uh, competitive at holding his own, at least in, in, in graded two miles uh, hurdles, and, and, and that, that sort of, that point has been proven, and whatever happens in champion hurdle will be great, but next season it'll be all guns towards um, novice chasing, which is very exciting. And the race looks probably the race of the festival. You've got Bouvet d'Air, Apples Jade, Lorena, to name but a few. Um, it's probably going to be run at a frantic pace. Do you think you might be able to get a lead, which has been rare for him so far in his career? I hope so. We certainly won't be intending on making it. He is a very free-going sort, but he's not, he's not out of control. But if they go a decent gallop and he settles off that pace, then it could, he could be really quite exciting. So, yeah, I think... If, if if they went a real good gallop and we 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 came down the hill in contention, then it'd be exciting to see what he could do from turning in. And you mentioned that anything he does this year will be perhaps be a bonus with novice chasing his his ultimate aim. Yeah, he um he actually won a three mile point to point um, as a five year old, and we all know what sort of you know how good he is jumping, and he's he's a horse that um, we took down to the school there the other day and popped him over a big big ox or over you know show jump and he he jumped it beautifully like he hadn't been hurdling all year so I think he's going to take to chasing very well and yeah that'll be hopefully his future and elsewhere on the first day Lebroy has a couple of options yeah he does he um he actually has three options for the whole meeting but the Ultima uh on the first day and the National Hunt Chase are two very live ones I think he stays all day. He wasn't right when he ran last time at Haydock. Apart from that, it was a pretty perfect season, winning only the once. But, you know, great course form at Cheltenham. He's rated 145 and he's got a great attitude and is in, is in fabulous form with himself since the Haydock run. He's really come back to his best and hopefully he takes a lot of work. So there'll be a couple more big days ahead of him work-wise between now and then. But if he gets there in in fine form then then he'll run a big race wherever he goes because for a novice he just does jump brilliantly and you know whether we go four mile or the reason I'm even entertaining something like the Ultima is because I think to be honest he's as good a jumper as we've got nearly in the yard over a fence so it doesn't matter what, what whether he's a novice or not I think he, he'd be well up to handling his own in that sort of race. Do you think perhaps the four mile national hunt chase might be dependent on who you may be able to get on board? Yeah to a certain level it's the four miler is a sort of a, a step into the unknown and I have no reason to believe that he wouldn't see out the trip and off the rating he is, he'd, he'd be one of the higher rated horses in the race. So, you know, it is, it's by no means an option that we won't explore yet, but um, we'll just see it. The four miler is turning more and more into a really quite a classy race, you know. A lot of very nice horses have, have in the last few years have, have, have run in it and run very well. So, you know, Ed Wolf, he, 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 he ran, obviously was unlucky and didn't stay home that stand on his feet that day, but then went and won the Irish Gold Cup, you know. So there's plenty of options. So if, if, if it doesn't look like a future Gold Cup, then I might be attempted, but otherwise we'd probably go to the handicap. And on day two, uh, the first race is the Ballymore Hurdle and you've got the very exciting bright forecast entered. He was second behind Mr Fisher at Haydock last time. How has he been since then? Very well. Um, 
this will be his last run of the season. He's a horse that um, probably wouldn't take a lot of work between his races. He he was a nice surprise, really. We knew, knew he was a nice horse, but it was a nice surprise to see him win at Newbury and expected it at Leicester. And then he did everything wrong, really, um, hanging off the final bet, off the home turn there with the circuit to go and missed one or two um, and, and, and ran a very credible race over two miles on a very tight track. So I think the step up in triple helped him massively. I, I genuinely think he's worth his worth his place he's very much an improving horse again very much next season's horse but I think he is capable of running a big race and um, at a lively price he could be quite a lot of fun excellent and Kildesart uh, will go for the first race on day three the JLT a race that perhaps looked like it looks like it could cut up a little bit yeah I mean sat here right now nobody quite knows where everyone's going to go but um Obviously, there's a couple at the head of the market, one of which is Deffy um, of Philip Hobbs's, and with Le Richberg now coming out, who knows where he'll go. But our job is to have our horses as well as we can, and if if they all line up in that race, I still think he's a horse with a profile of an improving novice. Really, you know, he he just got beaten at Ascot first time out, and then he won nicely in a graduation at. Ask it thereafter, and then obviously won his prep race on trials day at Cheltenham. So, and at, at Cheltenham, it just for a horse that I just I hope the track would work out for it. It looked like he really enjoyed it. You know, he, he slightly raced almost just slightly behind the bridle for a circuit, and then coming down the hill just locked on and and did it quite nicely. Hence the reason we got stung more um, than I hoped in the handicap, and that knocked out the close brothers. But he's raised 147 and the favourites are only 151 so there's four pounds we've got to find which really isn't that vast a golf and I, and I, I think he's probably our, our best chance of the week you know of a winner excellent and then lastly Nad Attack who won the grade two up at Doncaster a race you've enjoyed before with mm. Bartis Hill by 22 lengths which I think took you a bit by surprise but but he looks to be a Live chance if he does head to Cheltenham. That race was a r- muddling old race. Not many runners. What happened, I'm not sure. But he won very well. He must have fallen apart to some extent, I think. Um, he is a nice horse. He is a relentless galloper. He is suited by three miles. Whether or not he's suited by Cheltenham and the undulations of Cheltenham, I'm not sure. And that's the nag in the back of my mind about whether we go or not. Funnily enough, if the ground starts to get a bit quicker towards the end of the week, then that would probably encourage me because he's ex-flat horse and seems to handle the quicker ground quite well. He certainly wouldn't want to be rolling around there on soft ground. He would be very well suited to the three-miler at probably Aintree. And um, yeah, he's come out of the race really well. He's a nice horse. And I don't think you'd know where the bottom of this lad is if he gets into a rhythm. If he if he doesn't get into a rhythm, I don't think you've uh, at this stage in his career. He, he he's just he's a very big, almost ungainly type. For, that's considering he's come from the flat, and that's not to do him an injustice. He's he's a horse with a big engine and hopefully a bright future. And I actually think he'll be a lot better over a fence because the more substantial. But he jumped well enough, if a little slow at Doncaster, and um, there's every chance. Um, Put it this way: He'll be trained. He'll be trained to run at Cheltenham, and then if I, if I think better of it nearer the time, then we'll just save him for entry.